good morning, uh, everyone, and uh, thanks for uh, your attendance. I uh, appreciate the opportunity uh, to present, uh, present this work. Um, so, uh, so last year we presented sort of an introduction to our Corvo GAN library, and uh, so uh, we're continuing to work and expand the library, and um, this is a, a nice uh, follow-on. Uh, appreciate Ivan, Ivan Stock, and uh, so uh, my, my co-author is Richard Martin of Corvo. Uh, so this is how we'll organize the talk, just give you an introduction and overview to the way the library is presented and some of the model features and so on, and then talk about device level validation examples, which is available with, with every model, uh, basically with the click of a button, uh, maybe, maybe two clicks uh, within the simulator, as I'll show you. Um, and also, uh, it's, uh, uh, Steve Cripps is always talking about criticizing spots on lines where your, your model matches the measurement data that you use to produce the, the model and so on. So uh, we feel it's important to kind of um, try to do as much as we can uh, to do some uh, validation at the power amplifier level as well, the circuit level. And we're not um, as sophisticated as some of the designers here. Again, that's why I appreciate some of the input from, uh, from the experts that are using our models like, like Yvonne and, and others. And, uh, and finally, I want to talk about some new model features that will be coming in the, in the future releases and so on. So uh, I think that uh, since I've been in the industry, our company is, uh, uh, will be, uh, well, we started in 2001, so we're in our 15th year. And, uh, you know, I think there's uh, the old school uh, designers uh, in the PA world, especially, I think. Uh, there was a lot of expert gurus who knew how to make things work, and they didn't really believe in models. So I've been in this industry long enough to, to see that we're in a transition. And I think that we, uh, we see with, uh, with the papers and so on that are presented and the, the workshops that uh, not only are models being used, they're being pushed to uh, be accurate at multi-harmonics and uh, being doing uh, fairly sophisticated uh, design and, and wave shaping and things like this, right? So, um, so you know, models can provide uh, advantages uh, to designers. I think the whole idea is to, uh, to make uh, the the design modifications and so on um, quicker. I know that, uh, for example, uh, Corvo application engineers are using our models uh, when asked by a customer that, hey, what's going on at, uh, you know, you don't have any data at uh, 2.13 gigahertz or something. And rather than going out to the bench and making a measurement, they can use the model to generate data and, and explore it a lot quicker. So uh, the other thing is that if you carry a model all the way to the, the testing level, when you do have some trouble on the bench, uh, you, you may be able to use the model as a tool to give you an idea and some guidance uh, for troubleshooting the circuit, and we call this closing the loop, and uh, a lot can be learned there. Um, so the library right now, we're trying to um, um, you know, kind of track versions, and uh, we're up to uh, 1.61 beta. Um, the current library in, in beta has uh, you know, about... Um, so there's uh, 11 die and 24 package models and uh, more than 15 models coming. So by the time we get to 2.x, it'll be something like 50 models, die and, and package models. And these models are from uh, somewhere around 5 watts to uh, over, over 500 watts in the, in the, the current projection. Uh, the current library has a 300 watt model. So some of the um, advantages of the way the library is presented is uh, quick access to model data sheets within the library. Uh, so the manufacturer will have a data sheet on the part. We have a data sheet on the model for the part, and it'll tell you uh, a lot of uh, information that you might want to know about reference planes and other details. Um, we try to provide uh, example and, and reference projects, and we're providing direct support of the model. So if you are using the library, um, you contact us. Uh, the, um, at least we try to make a very easy installation process with a click-through click installer that will put the models and the examples in the right place. And, uh, and some of the, uh, the specific model features that are useful are uh, where some of the models have a scalable operating voltage, uh, VDSQ, for example. Uh, so um, uh, you can think about it as an as a adjustable sweet spot for the model. Um, and also uh, temperature, ambient temperature, and self-heating effects are included. And as you saw in the previous talk, the intrinsic voltage current uh, node access and in some cases, uh, if it's a die level model, we give you uh, the ability to turn on and off the bond wires, and it just makes it a little easier for some of the validations. And maybe the best part is the models are free to, uh, to designers. And uh, you know, at this point, rather than just staying in the PowerPoint world, I will risk it and go to 
you know, AWR. This is uh, uh, a view of one of the examples, and uh, the library, if you click on the Elements button, uh, the, um, if you have both our, our Monolithics library, this, the, the complete library, and the Corvo GAN library loaded, you'll look, it'll look like this. And if you click on die, you'll see all the die models listed here. If you click on the packages, all the packages models. So, uh, so all the models are loaded up. And this happens to be an example with a die level model. If I double click on the model, we can see some of the, um, the features. There's a VDSQ feature here. That's the, the sort of scalable sweet spot I talked about. There's a bond wire removal flag. It's set to zero or one. And if I click on vendor help, it's going to pull up a model information data sheet that'll tell you all about the model, right? So the, the, the validation frequency range, the, the uh, VDSQ is scalable for 12 to 28 volts on this model. Uh, temperature scalable, it's been validated uh, from 25 to 85 C. And it's been load pull validated at three frequencies here. And as you scroll down, you'll see reference planes, what happens when you throw the bond wire removal flag, what happens to your reference planes and things like this. Uh, typical measure to model agreement and, and other information, you know, in the data. So this is kind of an example of uh, device level validations. And, uh, and, and yes, Steve, we have some spots on lines. <laughs> oh, and uh, yeah, while I'm there, just looking, if you click on, uh, if you want to do the matching circuit like Yvonne was showing, uh, you can pick we have a lot of vendors represented here. These are, uh, these are scalable models, so you can optimize and tune the part value, take into account the substrate effect and so on, and, um, and get, a, get a good result from your, your model. So these are organized either by vendor, you can see by vendor here, uh, or by, by type. Um, so um, our library you know, includes all types of microwave devices, not only the CLR, you know, so there's transistors and, and so on, diodes. Okay. So let's come back to the PowerPoint world. Uh, so two types of temperature uh, effects. Uh, ambient temperature effects uh, just illustrated here on the IV curves at, at two temperatures. You can see the, the, IV, the, the current changing in temperature. And then self-heating. And we have, uh, in the current version of the library, we have some, a self-heating factor which can be uh, set to the duty cycle to approximate the variable amount of self-heating you might have in a pulse measurement. So for a very short pulse, you wouldn't have the, the thermal droop you would have in a CW measurement. Uh, the intrinsic uh, node, sort of intrinsic uh, node uh, concept here, uh, we can see what happens if, you know, um, when we, we sense a, a dynamic load line on an external versus internal uh, ports. I'll show a little more on this later on. Uh, the model data sheets, I've already talked about this, so I'm going to kind of speed through that. But this is the type of information that you get when you pull up the model. And if it's a package device, then of course you're going to get a different picture. <laughs> um, this is, uh, again, device level validation. This is a, a large device. This is a um, um, 300, 280 watt device. And um, uh, again, you see the reference planes here, what the model symbols looks like. And then um, this is a device level load pull validation and power drive up. Output power over here, basically reaching saturation of 56 dBm. Um, at the PA level, uh, this is, uh, I'll give you two examples here uh, of PA level validation. This is a one built by TriQuint Corvo. And uh, they just, uh, again, um, used the model, designed a, a reference design board at a, a particular frequency here, um, and 2 to 2.7 gigahertz band. And they were after 10 watts and 50% uh, PAE demonstration. And these are the, the results uh, without any, any tuning. Uh, the next example uh, was actually designed originally by Charles Suckling at Corvo, and then Monolithics rebuilt the design and, um, and validated it. So this, um, this is the, uh, the large signal results. It's a 65-watt design, and um, you know, pretty good agreement here after 60% you know, efficiency. And what we saw, the green line is Axiom results, and the red line is just using built-in transmission models. Um, both of them, of course, have... Um, uh, yeah, 
So uh, there is a, um, uh, there are some, uh, there's not too many lumped elements here, but where they are, we represented them with our lump models. Uh, but there's an app note specifically on this. This is uh, S parameter. Uh, we broke it down and looked at the input and output matching networks carefully and so on. And so there's an app note you can find on our website, app note 53. And it talks about uh, kind of the progression. And you can see that with the Axiom, um, adding the Axiom simulation, we, we got a, a little better match here on, on S11. And you can see that in the individual matching networks as well. So I'd refer you to, to this app note you know, for details. OK, so on to um, talking about some of the enhancements and things that we've been working on to uh, continue to improve the model. So we, uh, we're working, uh, the nice thing about having you know, Verilog code, we're working with Verilog code, so we're modifying. It starts with an Angelob model, but we're, um, we're adjusting it uh, to, our, to our purposes and, and things that we want to want to change. So we've done a little work on the gate current modeling, um, improve, improve the forest bias equations, and, and um, modeling the break, uh, breakdown of the diodes a little bit, enhancing the equations a little bit. Uh, we, um, we've enhanced the sensing intrinsic voltages by pulling CGD out of the model. So the current implementation CGD is in, and I'll show you the difference when you pull CGD out as well. Uh, the, uh, the parasitic network is, is a black box, um, just because it's our business to, you know, the models are our IP, IP and so on, so, but, but it's, uh, it's available. And I spent uh, time talking to Paul Tasker about um, just making sure we're presenting that in a way that uh, it supports a design flow that he thinks that someone wanting to do a waveform-based design flow will be able to work with. Um, another thing is, is adding a temperature node to sense the, uh, the temperature rise due to self-heating effects um, that could be um, you know, varied with, with pulse and, and uh, pulse width and duty cycle. So we're enhancing the, uh, the thermal modeling as well for peak temperature prediction during pulse operation. And the nice thing about the, the code is that um, we, we now have a universal code that works both in AWR and ADS well, and it's, it simplifies the translation for more identical model performance. Anyone involved in modeling knows that, you know, sometimes you have to uh, play around a little bit to, uh, if you're, you're porting models. Um, won't spend too much time on this, but this is just a, a slide on the, uh, the gate, uh, the gate modeling, improved gate current modeling. Um, the the sensing is going to look a little different. The slide that um, Yvonne showed uh, it, it uh, you know we were we were showing explicit voltage and current you know probes. Now we're bringing them out as ports here, and uh, these are the the current um, you know the, the intrinsic uh, voltages and the output current. Uh, Paul suggested we add the uh, the input current as well. So uh, I'll take that back to the R and D team, and. Um, not much else to say there. This is how you access them once you, you know, this is uh, the way it will work. Uh, all these become available to you within AWR um, in, the, uh, in the measurements window. So you can select them and output those, uh, all those parameters. Um, talking about uh, just uh, the tweak on the, the intrinsic sensing. So uh, presented here are three curves. The pink is the extrinsic sense. And you can see the extrusion of the current is going, you know, negative here uh, quite a bit. Uh, the green curve is uh, the current implementation, which has CDS out, but CGD is still in. And the red curve is uh, taking out uh, CGD as well. So we can see this is um, providing a, a little more ideal waveform. And so, uh, again, I'm... Um, I'm listening and, and learning and trying to understand what, what's going to work well for designers. But if you push in one level of the model, this is what you will see. Um, and this is all the, all the parasitic network is, is here. And so uh, uh, Paul has some ideas of um, inverting this network and, um, and doing some things with that we were talking about. But um, suffice it to say that you can get at this intrinsic port and you have access to it so you can uh, apply your advanced design approaches. Uh, talk about thermal modeling a little bit. Uh, Corvo in its data sheets presents curves like this. So we've been collaborating with, uh, with their experts on uh, this is numerical thermal analysis data. Uh, it's showing the maximum uh, temperature uh, predicted uh, during pulse um, operation. And uh, the, the, the lines are the, the thermal analysis data. 
and uh, we now are adding a feature in the model that will add, um, in addition to the self-heating factor, which we'd recommend setting that to the duty cycle, a pulse width input. And uh, with that, uh, the, the model prediction of, of those temperature rises are shown in the, in the spots that are on the lines. And just a demonstration of how a designer might use this information. Um, now that you, you have temperature, <coughs> uh, again, you can input the, uh, the base plate temperature and the pulse conditions. And if under uh, drive up, <coughs> if you plot the, the temperature, uh, uh, channel temperature, for example, prediction, you can plot that versus, um, uh, versus uh, this is the, the rise in temperature, T rise. Oh, that's over here, actually. This is uh, uh, channel temperature not to rise channel temperature. Uh, so the blue curve is temperature and the pink curve is efficiency. So you, uh, as you might expect, uh, when you have a design optimized for efficiency, it, it's going to run cooler at that peak efficiency point. So um, we've tried to demonstrate that you can get uh, good first pass success with, with PA designs using uh, uh, good GAN models and also uh, proper treatment of the passive models. And I would say in our experience um, with PA design, maybe a, a first pass isn't always um, expected, but if you have that simulation model and there's some things that, that are not optimum, rather than just going around the old way and putting foil everywhere, uh, you can go to the simulator and try to see if you can understand what might um, be sensitive. Uh, you can do a, a Monte Carlo on the output input nat matching network and so on. And uh, so hopefully uh, have a more intelligent uh, design um, guidance. So uh, talked about uh, several enhancements to our upcoming models and um, uh, just want to encourage you to go to our website and if you click on, um, well here's the, the exact link, uh, if you go to our home page and click on the Corvo logo it, it will take you here, uh, well maybe not right here but this is on the page and uh, this is kind of a little area where you can uh, you can play a video see some app notes and and learn more about the models and so on and for model support contact us uh, for device support contact Corvo and thank you for your time <laughs>